Battle for Texas continuing to live up to its reputation. This historically has been a matchup that's really gone back and forth between these two teams. Yeah, watch me now! Cappy looking for the Deadeye. Oh, oh it's two! <laughs> Nations pays off, Doha. The Outlaws huge. on the high ground. Dante gets fielded. That's huge. Dante has made his mark at home. Everything going the way of the Outlaws this time, Doha. It's time to settle the score. Sparkle will not be denied. Already gets All happy. Right. Throw Ooh. another one. Ooh. Sparkle with three. The deadliest Smash Brother is Sparkle. How about another self destruct? Why not? You get Send a self destruct. Bombs. You get a self destruct. Let me show you what it's all about. Explosive. <laughs> you watch me now. Oh, beautiful oh, play. You love to see it. What a graffiti flux. Houston Outlaws going up against the Dallas Fuel. We are coming back for the Battle of Texas. It's finally time. Welcome back, everyone. We are seeing Dallas live at the Esports Arena in Arlington. The Fuel fans are going wild because we're only moments away from another epic battle for Texas, where our next series is taking us into a Western standard. Yeah, unbelievable that we can finally see the crowds once again. Got their thunder sticks going on, the signs, the flags, everything. The Dallas Fuel fans must be super happy as well, Vicky, because their team is rocking it right now this year. Of course, we've got a walkout coming up in a moment as well. This Battle for Texas it goes down in history. You saw the, was it the history video at the very start of that. And currently, Dallas Fuel, over the last seven games, Vicky, they've won six of them. Six! Like, that's an incredible number. Uh, the Outlaws are going to have to pull out something rather special, but they've also had a turnaround year as well. The, uh, the Outlaws, brand new look almost. They got Jake back as well, from uh, pinched, uh, pinched him from the uh, the casting roster. And they also look exceptional. Their double shield game has just been on point this season. I'm not expecting that to change too, Jaws. And taking a look at the Houston and, and Houston Outlaws and looking at their location in comparison to Dallas, I think it's like a three and a half uh, hour away by, by car. So, you know, they're not too far. And the Outlaws are going to be the first players we're going to see. Despite uh, Dallas having this live event, Houston Outlaws, I believe, are having their own personal watch party. So maybe we'll get some footage of that for you guys soon so that we can all be in tune to both parties at once. Why not be somewhere at the same time? Uh, all at once when it comes to the Dallas Fuel and this homestand and of course the Houston Outlaws with their watch parties. Taking a look at the starting roster right now, Jaws, we got Dante, we got Happy, Jangu, Piggy, Crimzo, and Judy. This is a team that I would say are the best team to contest with Dallas, but this is also a team that constantly finds Dallas as this wall that they just can't break through. Yeah, they are 9-2 and two currently this year, Vicky, Piggy, Jungu, they have been a crazy tank line together. Piggy Sigma, unreal. Some of the best stats in the league currently. The double shield is exceptional for them. Happy, a superstar, would have made it like hit scan play. And then, of course, Dante. Like, what more do you really need to say about Dante? The guy is an absolute nutcase, and any hero he picks up. And their back line is looking rather solid as well. Juby, a little bit of a um, a newer face, of course, but he's against he's alongside Crimzo, a very a veteran player at the Overwatch League at this point, and Juby slotted in rather nicely. They definitely had a bit of a, a not, I wouldn't say teething issues, but it was a little bit slow to start off with with Juby. We had Jake come in some of the times for the uh, mm -hmm. for the Jake Mercy, but Juby, <laughs> permanent fixture in the roster it seems like now alongside Crimzo, and they are looking stellar. And why don't we take a look at the Dallas Fuel as we are here live in Arlington. Well, you're not here, but they are. So why don't we take a look at their roster, having them move in. And they have to make an appearance here, guys. They have to, because this is a team that is considered the best in the league right now. This is a team that has consistently made it out of the knockouts, make it through, win the first May Melee, win the first stage, rather. And in that second stage, they finally had another team that they had to deal with, the Shanghai Dragons. But, you know, taking a look at everybody saying hi, being able to rep their favorite players, that is what I'm here for, Joss. That is what I'm living for. I haven't been able to experience this myself just yet, but it's just a matter of time. We are slowly inching our way to having more homestands out there. It feels like Dallas Fuel are one of the most animated uh, rosters as well on the cams. Of course, we know Sparkle for going crazy, but Fearless mm -hmm. too. There's that really nice screenshot of him just screaming in rage, <laughs> it looks like, when he dies on the on the Winston. 
and being in front of the home crowd is going to suit them proper. Like, uh, Sparkle's history as a player is just exceptional. Uh, formerly of Element Mystic, of course. The guy's been playing on stages ever since he started his career, basically. Fearless alongside him as well. Uh, a transformed player from a Shanghai Dragons losing every single one of their games back in Season 1 to where he is now, the best main tank we currently have in the league. An unbelievable performance. And I think he's captured so many people's hearts as well. A true underdog rising to what he is now. Yeah, looking at all these players here coming out from the field. You talk about the best main tank. We also had Hanbin that just came up on the stage. The best off tank that we currently have. I can say it confident here, confidently here. You know, now look at that coming out with the Ryan Hammer. You love to see it. And that's something else about these home stands is, you know, aside from seeing the players getting that experience, you know, burning blue and all that stuff, you also have a lot of these players that have these favorite props of, their, of theirs that belong to their respective characters. Look at that. You got to get the hammer down and the rest of the Dallas. They're out. I love this energy. And this is also a great way for the Dallas people to have some fun before they get into some serious business in the series versus the Outlaws. Yeah, Phil is definitely hoping that's the rest of the Outlaws going down <laughs> in his shadows. The Dallas Fuel have shown uh, a few different flavors as well of what they want to run, but their dive is immaculate. They want to play things like Genji. There was, uh, there was questions, there was worries for the Dallas Fuel. They didn't have a hit scan player. And mm -hmm. Doha and Sparkle have just kind of proven that they don't really need to play hit scans some of the time when it almost seems mandatory for a lot of the teams. We saw them with different flavors of Sim uh, a couple of months ago, and they just blew everybody out of the water. Uh, at the helm, of course, Fearless just diving in on the monkey, being super aggressive on Reinhardt as well. The Dallas Fuel, there's something to contend with. And not only that, Vicky, but whoever wins right now in this series is going through to the summer showdown as well a lot on the line two extremely different styles of play we've got the double shield on one side and we have this dive super aggro uh, aggression from the uh, from the dallas fuel and i think a lot of it's actually going to come down to to the maps too this map factor mm -hmm. is going to be yeah Unbelievable. Like Oasis, Hanamora, Hollywood, Gibraltar, Nepal, if we really need to get there. The Dallas Fuel, if they do end up slipping a map early on, they can almost bank on Gibraltar being one of their maps. Dive super prominent on that map. Hollywood two at points as well. This match is going to be crazy. Can the Outlaws actually bounce back? They are one out of seven games in the last seven they played against the Dallas Fuel. They want to make that two of eight, Vicky. They want to start grabbing back those wins. When I take a look at both these teams, Jaws, it was so difficult for me to make a decision on who I'm expecting to come out of the series, only because I, I settled for Dallas Fuel only because they're so consistent in comparison to the Outlaws, the team that has just been struggling so far whenever it comes to the Dallas Fuel. It's, they're, again, they're just like this wall when it comes to this team. So now making some adjustments, looking at a lot of the compositions that we witnessed from these teams, you mentioned you mentioned being aggro, right? We talk about these sim TP plays that we've seen from the fuel, trying to get creative with these angles, trying to make sure that they catch their opponents off guard. But can that work against a team like the Outlaws that love running that double shield? Of course, it does trickle down to how long these team fights last, considering the fact that we have Sparkle, who's been able to pop off on that sim. And we know, we talked about it before in our last series, the longer that sim is out in that fight, the deadlier she becomes and the harder it is to close out that fight. If you don't deal with that sim, that's going to be a lot of damage coming in. It looks like die for both teams as well in city center. Not too much of a surprise. Of course, the high ground aiding uh, the Winston and Diva getting up there ASAP. One slight difference though. It's going to be the Echo versus the Sombra. This is going to be a little bit more uh, diff. Oh no, sorry. Echo versus Reaper. Yeah, a little bit more difficult to deal with the Echo, of course, as Juby has got the pocket. But if the Dallas Fuel can rotate around them and just try and isolate one of the tanks, they should be good. A hack is ideal on the Diva or the Winston to stop them from uh, running rampant in the back line. Point does unlock now as uh, both teams still contesting. And you see tier too with Piggy actually trying to wait things out here. Try to give some backup to Jago. The Dallas Fuel are going to take the point first. I like the way the Outlaws are playing. Not really overly aggressive. They actually just wanted to disengage real quick, wait for the rest of Outlaws before re-engaging right now. It's Sparkle who finds the first pick onto Happy. You can already hear the, uh, the crowd going crazy for a Sparkle, a player who's popped off in this entire season. I can't hear the crowd, but I know that that is what's going on right now. I can only imagine the energy seeping through the audience for the Dallas Fuel. 
Oh, such a nice pick. Happy going down early. Means Doha is going to get a lot more charge on the exit kills. And now he's got the EMP. They've got Coalescence. Dallas Field want to go quick. They want to go fast. Juby has switched over to the brig now as well. So they know zero ult charge on that character. Dante, maybe. Maybe he gets copy for this fight. But it looks like Dallas Field, they want to go early. Oh, and uh, with the EFP already, it does hit both support lines. Yubi gets away in time, and the fact that the Dallas Field couldn't really get too much off of that EFP doesn't matter because Sparkle is actually right behind them. They gotta look to their backs. The support lines are in trouble. Sparkle, Sparkle, being able to find that pick and get enabled with the rest of the team. Dallas Field just falling up beautifully, and look how far they've been able to push up on Dallas too. They're already ahead in terms of percent, 60 percent for the Dallas Field. On this point. You mentioned at the very start, Vicky, a lot of these fights are going to be prolonged. It's, it's hard to get people down when you've got Moira and Lucio just pumping you full of heals. And we're at 70%. This could be last fight. Humping needs his mech back, ideally. Uh, he should be able to get a couple of nice little hits. Or, like, maybe not, actually, because a lot of that's actually getting matrixed. A lot of bolts for Outlaws now. They're going to go for this engagement fairly quickly. EMP. Oh. Oh, the EMP finds Sparkle and Fearless right here, but the sound barrier was out of that range, so Jack, so we actually were able to see that coming through from the Dallas Fuel. Hanbin also has that debuff bomb, but Sparkle, Sparkle gets eliminated with the focus. I mean, he had a plan, but the Death Blossom just couldn't land on its mark, and now another EMP getting built up so quickly by Doha. Fights two here, and the Dallas Fuel are going to be able to turn this situation around. The Allos looked like they had their footing here on this point, but the Fuel unfortunately just sandwiched them and prevented the Outlaws from really getting get much touch. out of those ultimates that they were able to push out with. They do get touched. Self-Destruct comes in, doesn't find anybody, and Juby's already dead. Yeah, that's the uppercut. Sparkle just being an absolute threat. Look at that. He's still diving through. Gets a punch onto Piggy. The Outlaws couldn't even flip the point once within this first round. All right, round number one goes to the Fuel. Oh, my word. Outlaws didn't really have a say in that whatsoever. They came out with a different composition completely, but the Dallas Fuel had every single answer. The EMP from Happy, which took so long to build up, was negated by Jexay's sound barrier. He hit most of the members of the Fuel, stayed out of the EMP's range, so he didn't get hacked out of it, and then they just ran forward and destroyed the Outlaws. Now, it's going to be a completely different look, Vicky. The Outlaws, they're going to go back to what they prefer. They prefer this double shield. They don't re well, maybe they like playing the dive, but against the Fuel, if you're going mono on mono, dive versus dive, the Fuel are going to win out more often than not. You have to look at the consistency in these team fight wins when it comes to the Dallas Fuel, and also just their positioning just being so much better than the Outlaws. You talk about the double shield, and they're coming out with it. We've got Jungu back on the Orisa that we're so used to seeing. Piggy's already dead, by the way. <laughs> uh, Hammond getting into position. Thanks to Jexy right there, too, being able to put him in, and Doha finding two. The Outlaws are not having a good time to the start for this second round, Jaws. Currently, the Dallas Fuel are just running away with murder. Man, we talked about the TP and the May, the Sim May combo. May's weakness, I say that very lightly because May doesn't have that many weaknesses, but it is her mobility. She is just a character that walks along, just kind of chills, right? But when you add her with a teleporter, diving to the back line, TPing May into a position where she can wall off of a tank, or to be fair, even in this map, you don't really need to do that because the corridors are so thin. It's perfect. Wall off Piggy, and you're going to find success. They're going to try and try do it again, but this time Fearless is in trouble. Oh, you, you have to try to get through this, and Dante actually is walling them off, but here comes the Blizzard. Doha now, but talking about the Dallas Fuel popping off after that blizzard. The Outlaws had nowhere to go here. Sparkle popping off again. It's just a team wipe again from the Fuel. This is almost looking identical to what we had last seen when these two teams had faced off of the battle for Texas. It's not the Western standoff that I was expecting this time around for the Houston Outlaws. It's so hard for the Houston Outlaws to disengage from these blizzards, Vicky. They don't have speed boost. The only thing they can do is TP. Speaking of TP, those Fearless is in the back line. Oh, oh just in case the wall almost blocked it. I'm not too sure. Here's the Sparkle now fighting Dante. Here comes a Shatter. Does get that pin onto Piggy. One of the, the best Sigma. He gets annihilated here. But they isolated Piggy and Happy's gone down. And the rest of Dallas Fuel are still holding on to this point. Jangju finding three is going to allow the rest of the Outlaws to move in. And finally, find themselves on the point for the first time in the first map at least. Shaku's still going in, by the way. He hasn't been stopped and he didn't even need to use the Supercharger. So they're going to be able to hold on to that and the Ant Matrix and Blizzard for the next engagement we're going to see from the Fuel. I think Jangu 
got four kills, five kills maybe? Oh, like his five. name was, was in like the kill feed quite a lot there. My word, that was a perfect wall from Dante. He realized that Fearless was behind, just walled him off. And then they just walked towards the rest of the team. It doesn't matter if Fearless has speed boost. Uh, he didn't at that point because Jexir was trying to help appeal for the rest of his team. He's not going to be able to catch up to the Outlaws just steamrolling over you. Dante won that fight for them hands down with that wall. Now, TP for Dallas Fuel, they're behind again. Oh, talk about creative angles with these TPs. They had a plan, but now Sparkle, Sparkle's gonna get a lot of damage with that beam, but talk about the Gravitic Flux. Piggy always so consistent on getting most of that damage done from the Gravitic Flux. They do clean up from the, around the Fuel, and now the Outlaws can finally get a little comfortable here. They didn't use everything, Jaws. They had the Supercharger, they used that, but they still have the Blizzard and the Photon Barrier coming up. Yeah, they can definitely breathe a sigh of relief. Dante has the Blizzard, the best tool the Fuel can use right now to negate that, really. Well, it would be perfect if uh, Hanbin ate it, but that wall from Sparkle. The Photon mm -hmm. Barrier, if it comes out, maybe blocks off the LOS, or uh, they could just do this. <laughs> they can just jump on top oh, of them. Hey, that'll do. <laughs> oh, they can so much too. They just jump on top of them. Find Juby and Piggy. Here comes a Photon Barrier next. Sparkle gets deleted by Crimzo, but it doesn't matter. The rest of the fuel, they have not only the number advantage, but they have the point advantage. Once they're done cleaning up Crimzo, the fuel are looking pretty strong, being able to retake that pretty quickly, uh, considering the Outlaws. They had won those last two fights. Yeah, Outlaws basically used everything as well, Vicky. They're in the danger zone, 10% to go, and the Fuel will take this first map in the battle for Texas. Fearless has got a shadow to his name. Outlaws have to touch as well. They have arrived on the point, and Jungu switched over to the ball to get that touch. Oh, well, here it goes, sending everybody up. He wanted to go in for the follow-up here too. Fearless gets the, the shatter, and the Immortality Field's already been called up. Fielder has the Ant Matrix, but you saw Dante placing that wall immediately as it was called in. And because of that, though, you also have certain members of the Outlaws isolated. Juby goes down, Fielder is still in the back. He's still uncontested. And look at the positioning from all of these players. The Outlaws, they were spread thin, and the Dallas Field take map number one, the Battle of Texas. Map number one in front of their home crowd as well. They are just going crazy, and of course they are. Tank diff sign. Oh man, I mean, those teleports <laughs> from Sparkle. Perfect position. It. it didn't feel like the supports that the Outlaws could deal with this aggression, and not too much of a surprise. The Fuel, they know how much uh, they can give, they know how much they can take. Fearless just be in the back, swinging his hammer, and Sparkle and Doha just blizzard after wall. It's just too much for the Outlaws to currently deal with. Emotions are definitely high in that stadium for sure, but it's uh, all positive right now. The Fuel will take the first map. Control, two to zero. We're gonna jump to a quick break, guys. Do not go anywhere. We've got map number two coming up soon. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, America's largest and fastest 5G network. Set your sights on the competition with T-Mobile.
The Overwatch League is brought to you by Coca-Cola, the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. And by IBM, the official cloud and AI partner of the Overwatch League. Uh, now your only damage is going to be a Genji, which isn't the most consistent in the world at trying to do damage, although I say that, look at Dope, oh, I just... Oh, that's the guy going to find the biggest one from Blippi yet, but Izzyaki will go down, but now before you can get that Nano boost out on a Fearless, who is just cleaving everybody like a monster. Long as well, that was how you died, and Sparkle! Oh my word, that's what we wanted to see. Welcome back, everyone. We are live in Dallas at the Esports Arena in Arlington. The Fuel fans, they're feeling it. We just saw the Dallas Fuel take map number one, Jaws. Now we're going on to a map number two. The Houston Outlaws, though, they're trying their best. They're trying to put up a fight with this audience that we see the Dallas Fuel have in front of them. They're just powering them up too much already, considering the fact that the Fuel already as strong as they are. Yeah, I mean, the Fuel are looking crazy. What a surprise, right? And their tank line, we speak about it, uh, we speak about Fearless enough, but another person on the tank roster, oh, it's Hanbin. This guy's crazy. Another, another element missing alumni, by the way. Like, oh, yeah. there's not, <laughs> the amount of talent that team <laughs> produced is ridiculous. He is one of the players that was very hyped to come in to the league last year with Sparkle on Paris Eternal. He's the main melee champion, of course, the June Joust finalist, like 2020 mm -hmm. All Star. This guy has so many accolades to his name already. His D.Va is phenomenal. His uh, signal as well is very good. Oh man, the Outlaws, they're gonna have to put up a fight. They, they, they did struggle a little bit there, even on a map that suits their comp a whole time. Oh my gosh, and look at this leaderboard too. The Fuel having some of these wins here on Houston. Take a look at the, the time bank between that series in 2018. Five minutes and 34 seconds all time on Hanamura. These map leaderboard stats too are so great and seeing what we could expect from a lot of these reoccurring series whenever we see these teams face off against each other. So that's always good to see. But yeah, no, let's see if they can replicate that or even do better going into this next series versus Houston. Yeah, I mean, I don't think Houston want to look at that screen. I'm going to be real with you. I'm going to be real with you. The Dallas Field, second place uh, in terms of speed running Hannah Moore against the Houston. They're, they're definitely feeling pretty good. And I mentioned two last seven games. These teams have faced off for the Battle of Texas. It has been the Dallas Fuel taking six of them. Yep. The Outlaws want to take this series. The Dallas Fuel, of course, as well. But the winner here guarantees themselves a spot in the Summer Showdown. It's all to play for, and I mentioned too, map dependent on these comps. It is very beneficial for the Outlaws right now to go to Hanamura. Their double shield works very well here. This sim teleport strategy where they can put the tanks at the front with a sim TP that goes straight back to point is going to be extremely important for them to navigate around the fuel who, to be fair, have been doing the same thing. We saw it on University on Oasis, Vicky. Just the TPs from Sparkle getting Doha and Fearless to the back line of the Outlaws. That is where they're finding success. Essentially what we saw before, the sandwich method that we uh, saw the attempt from. Okay, okay, I saw the attempt right that there. That was close. A quick... Yeah, that, that was I really think close. that I... may have been a connection of the hook, but it but it disconnected. That would have been awful if that uh, <laughs> did happen. But this is the Dallas Fuel that we thought we'd see as well. The dive. They just want to run at the back line. This MTP is going to have to get uh, used super defensive to escort themselves back. They haven't got a speed boost on them. In fact, they're going to actually push themselves forward. Look, Jexate was caught out oh. completely. Fielder 2, no oh. supports now for the Fuel. That was huge here. They've taken out the supports, and now the Dallas Fuel thought that no one was going to contest them. I mean, although they got two ticks, the Outlaws have all the resources in their pocket to try to take it. Now they're down Crimson, though. But at the cost of two ticks, Joss, was it worth it? I mean, it'd be worth it if the Fuel can't A take it at all. thousand percent, Vicky. But, I mean, the three minutes now, too, on the time bank for the Fuel to try to push into that choke point. Yeah, one thousand percent was that worth it. Just give up Jexa and Fielder to get... 66%. Oh, yeah. Any day of the week. Okay. Whoops, it's easy. Oh. Sparkle ends up going down to a headshot from Dante. 
I mean, the problem is, too, for the Outlaws, they can't really deal with people on the flank like this. They have to actually expend the Teleporter in order to try and contest somebody. But now they're probably going to destroy it. The front line's in trouble again. Bilis is stunned up. Ooh, frozen too. Oh. Piggy ends up finding the kill. And they're spending a lot of time off the time bank here. Blizzard's available for Dante as well. Another brilliant defensive tool against this Nano Blade. I love this approach from the Outlaws. They are isolating the fuel one by one. You do have Doha who's on the back line, but they're not going to give so much attention to that. You're also, you also have Sparkle, but although they do have both of those ticks, they can have that teleporter to just get immediately back to the point if necessary. Like you may mention, they did it already before. They may do it again here. Fearless has the primal, though, and with Dallas Fuel having these ultimates, it's going to be harder for the Outlaws to really get away with the murder that they put on to the support line of the Fuel. Fearless gets put to sleep, but he gets waken up immediately right afterwards, and the Blizzard has been unleashed by Dante. Photon Barrier out. Created some space, but look at the way the fuel are playing. They're playing to disengage. You're waiting for the opportunity to dive back in. They waited out on those ultimates. It's six man anti. anti. Six man anti. Wow. Anti ulti. Everyone from the outlaws. This is the chance for the fuel to dive onto the points. That was amazing from Fielder. So worth it. He dies, but at the cost of taking the entire point, thanks to the rest of the Dallas fuel annihilate, annihilating the Houston outlaws. Unbelievable anti there from Fielder. Just won them the point there, hands down. The Outlaws did not expect Fielder to just be waiting there with Nade after the TP. Oh, disaster. And the fuel, look at the ultimates they have now online, Vicky. They have Rally Blade. They have the Pulse Bomb, self-destruct. All the explosions, they really need to take this point as well. The Engage is coming in. There's the Blade. Oh, this is the opportunity. The Supercharger now coming in from the Outlaws. The Gravitic Flux from Piggy, who's been so consistent. But Happy's turret has found Fielder. Doha. Had that blade, he gets away with it. He gets to retreat. They're forced to get back. Stoa's taking a lot of damage here, but the outlaws have been able to sustain themselves. Right. The supercharger from Jangu really helped them out on putting on the pressure to force the fuel out of that situation. And they lost Fearless, too. Man, Dante bought so much time there as well, Vicky. Hit the E. Uh, what do you do is winning your tour? Well, you speed up, you've got a lot of extra armor, you just kind of run around to right, maybe try and find some kills. But Doha and Sparkle were trying to chase him down. It was two versus one. Dante's value there just by hitting the overload was absolutely immense. Doha in a little bit of trouble again. He will be able to get the mega health back, so he should be okay. Another nano primal rage maybe coming up here for the fuel. When you see the Outlaws and you see this double shield and you see Dante on the Torbjorn, and it's just to negate Fearless and getting too much off of it. Now that he's nano boosted though, he can dive Missed in, he can isolate the Outlaws on the back lines. He's isolated Crimson. That's a great first pick to enable the rest of the field to dive in. He gets two. That's no support, no tank from the Outlaws. It's just up to Jago who goes down by Doha. And look how quickly they were able to isolate the Outlaws. Make sure that they are not a threat in taking the second point. The desperate rally, he does manage to contest, and the rest of the Outlaws are trickling in. We see some swabs. We see Jack now Juby. on the ball. Doobie is anti. He's going to get deleted, but he actually gets away with it. He actually gets into a health pack or maybe retreats right back to Crypto or the spawn. Now Sparkle, he's taking a nap. He's taking a lot of damage. And Jack got hit with another anti. The fact that the Houston Outlaws with Happy on the McCree getting a 3k was able to come back from the spawn and reclaim this defense is insane because the fuel, they had those resources, but the Outlaws, they were just a lot better with making these swabs quicker, they were able to really isolate the fuel one by one. There is no way Juby stayed alive for that long, Vicky. I can't believe He it. was no HP, he was anti Crimzo hit him with, an, uh, I think, a pre-nade too, so when he did uh, remove the purple from himself, or like the purple disappears, he could instantly start boosting him with heals. That was unbelievable! He got so much value from that rally. Luckily enough though, the fuel, they have two ticks. They're gonna go for another engage, Sparkle on his famous Doomfist as well. Oh, but he gets hit with an anti right away when he starts off with the engagement. Nano blade. Back off a little bit. The nano blade coming in. Here's the opportunity, but they have to deal with the molten core. Anti onto Juby and Dante, and Juby took a nap, but he still didn't die because they're respecting the molten core. The fact that Juby has been living through all these situations is crazy. Jangu's also sleeping. Meanwhile, Sparkle, he's punching his way through the support line of the outlaws. They won't have Crimson, but they still have this rally, but somebody needs to deal with Sparkle, or that's going to be it. The Fuel are going to come constantly put on a lot of this pressure. Fearless is literally hugging their spawn here. They found these two picks, and now the Dallas Fuel, they want to make sure with this Meteor Strike that there's nowhere for the Outlaws to triple from the spawn. There we go. It took them a little bit of time, but they eventually do it. 
What a, a perfect play from Dante yet again. I know, of course, they did end up losing the point there, but Dante is doing a fantastic job at mitigating a lot of these ultimates. The Nano Blade, you straighten on the back line. Dante kites back, uses the multi core defensively, and stops Doha from getting anything done. But yet again, what a surprise. Sparkle on the Doomfish, just causing absolute havoc. They were able to isolate Juby once again and take him out. A little bit quicker that time around as he was using the rally <laughs> and they made it work. Sparkle's got so many tools in his arsenal when it comes to these picks. His Doomfist is, uh, is famous way back from when he played uh, on Element Mystic when the GOATs were still meta. They did end up modifying the GOATs comp a little bit and put on uh, put Sparkle on the Doomfist. This Doomfist GOATs was just so oppressive. And the Dallas Fuel, yeah, they've only got a minute and 11 seconds, but Hanamura. Vicky is sometimes a pretty hard map to actually finish. Of course, you saw it there in the last couple of fights where it takes a long time to kill a brig and the brig stays alive with Rally. <laughs> and then it slowly but surely, everybody is able to kind of trickle back onto the point, mainly due to those spawns too. If you think about where you spawn in um, on Hanamura Defense second, you have, a, you have a very quick sight line to the point. So if you're a support, it's very beneficial. Um, uh, to heal the people that are trying to stall. So a minute, 11 seconds, not the biggest time bank in the world for the fuel. Oh, fearless. Oh, no, okay. oh. I thought he was going to, I don't know why in my head it was like, you, oh, he was going to go charge for Josh or something. Yeah, I was like, there's no way oh, he Josh. Goes for this cheeky pin. There's no way. But yeah, I mean, Hanbin's here too. He's just going to scout and just get back rather quickly. So. Uh, uh, the Outlaws, all they want to do is just TP onto the point or TP to high ground, just out-rotate the fuel. Oh, look at this teleporter. They're actually opting to go for the strategy that didn't work so well for the fuel initially. They made some swaps at the beginning, but now the Outlaws, they're holding onto that high ground position. And, ooh, a cheeky little stun there, having to be careful if you're Jexa. Houston Outlaws now, wasting no time. They're trying to get in. They set up some of these turrets, but they also have to deal Good with Sparkle's wall. turrets. And the wall, too, coming in from Doha actually stops the rotation from the Outlaws, isolates them. They're forced out with the Immortality Field. They trade that for Fearless for Juby. Now with Piggy going down, it's going to be the Dallas Fuel who have more heads on this point. And take a look at Happy, though, with all this damage that he's putting out. Can Happy actually do this here? Oh, no, it's going to be way too difficult. Yeah, you're getting beat by Sparkle, too. I mean, there's nobody else left to help heal for Happy. And the Fuel. They hold that down, but that was really close. So at the same time with the Outlaws, they were trading here for, against the Fuel. Yeah, Juby went down fairly early as well there, Vicky. As soon as you lose that big AoE healing that the Brig provides, you're in a sorry situation. And Crimzo doesn't get nearly enough as protection as well. Feel it alive in that situation? Way back, way back in the in the distance, like on the horizon almost. There was no one taking him down. It was up to Dante or Happy to maybe find the kill. Wow, that is a pick and a half, actually. Jexy, I think maybe looking at his body, maybe jumped through the window, got stunned by Juby and taken out. One healer down for the fuel already. That was a, a really scary pick there, too, especially since Jexy had actually gotten stunned initially here. Here comes a shatter, though. Happy is stunned. Meanwhile, Fearless is quite literally holding forward. He's got the teleporter, too, that he could just retreat to. And the rest of the outlaws, they found Fielder. They trade that for Juby. Now Jengu's going down. And despite Piggy having this Gravitic Flux, look how much damage he's taking from Sparkle, who still hasn't died, who still has that big beam. It's going to go down a little bit now that there's some downtime to the fight. But Jaws, the outlaws are just not finding their footing onto this first point. No, 5v6 as well. As Jex, they died super early. They just couldn't make it work. A lot of that was in part actually to Sparkle's wall. It's just a giant cheer. Uh, we can just stand behind it. Dante, Happy, they can't really do much. Happy, yeah, can charge off the wall, but it's up to the fuel to push past it for Happy to actually get damaged. They used the Flux really late into the fight as well. They definitely could have used that with this Blizzard. I mean, Dante's got it online now, but uh, it might be a little bit of a miracle for them to actually catch anybody. There's Supercharger used first. As the Dallas fuel, look, they just leave. They're going to give up ticks. <laughs> Oh, that ain't not my business. They could touch at least to, to contest before it gets to that second ticket. And they do actually right there. Supercharger 2 just waiting that out. Here comes the Blizzard for a Blizzard. And the South Barrier, though, difference is going to keep Dallas Fuel in this fight. Meanwhile, they don't have Crimzo and they won't have that Immortality Field. They only have the Rally from Juvie, who's been able to stay alive for so long. And the Photon Barrier that they have to get through, that could trickle into Happy and a lot of that damage output. And the Outlaws have finally found that opening that they needed. Look at them just tearing through the fuel, tearing around around this bell to finally get this first point, but I really like the positioning from Happy specifically there because then he was able to charge up his beam, utilizing the photon barrier that Sparkle put out. And now we're also seeing some swaps from the Dallas field with Sparkle going up to the junk round. 
Oh yeah, quick TP, really quick TP. Doha, Doom, Sparkle, Junk. Okay, I'm down, I'm down. Nice TP over. The Outlaws, I feel like they're just waiting for the wall here from Happy. As soon as he does put that out, the Dallas Fuel are gonna have a tough time just uh, marching through it. Okay, TP, high ground now. Wall available. Hanbin, low. Doha dead. Oh, oh, this is the opportunity right now. They're going to be able to dive in. Jangu finding two. Jangu's have been absolutely on fire, melting through the fuel. Fielder has found Happy here, but Happy still was able to utilize the photon barrier before Diva Bomb finding Crimson. And meanwhile, Piggy tries trying to land an accretion. They're spreading the fuel thin. You can see them trying to retreat, but we still have Doha coming back from the spawn. And that's the beauty when you have your spawn right behind you. They can also make some last minute swap if they need to here. The Outlaws, they had something good going for themselves. Jaws, that was so quick of them too. They wasted no time to try to get into that point. Yeah, make every second count, really. They got 66% as well, Vicky. The Dallas Fuel using this high ground rather effectively. Fielder can just hold an off angle for days on that bat, use the window on himself, and actually force Dante to use the wall to stop all that damage coming through. But Fielder still managed to find a pick. Okay. Now we have an arm. <laughs> this is going to be all on Piggy now. He needs to eat these fire nades, otherwise they will die extremely quickly. Sparkle's oh. already dead though. Dive coming in. They talk about dying extremely quickly. I mean, Sparkle got it deleted right there. Doha though gets the uppercut onto Juvie, so that's going to be hugely impactful. Although Fearless going down is also big because now Jericho's going to be able to move over, take control over the space, put down that barrier. It's for the fuel trickling in instead. We see some swaps happen on the ball. Now with the Blizzard, it's just too much room to control. They won't be able to touch that wall. Actually prevented Fearless from even contesting the point. Wow, really nice early pick again. The Outlaws are finding these Score. initial picks. Dallas Fuel being a little bit over aggressive, maybe. <laughs> I mean, Jexy on first point, for example, getting shield bashed and then instantly killed. But the teleports from the Outlaws are so good. They're so well drilled in TPing around the map. But um, around the map. But the fuel, the same could be said for them as well. To be fair, they're also using a lot of heroes that can just dive on in too. Yeah, Sparkle can kind of sit back and uh, fire the little grenades. But Doha is just going to be in your backline as well. They managed to kill Juby fairly early on, but it didn't matter in the end. As soon as the Outlaws are set up on the point with the Sim destroying the shields, and then Piggy. Eating a lot of the damage that's coming towards Jungu's shield is pretty easy for them. It's up to the Dallas Fuel to really aggress and try and find picks. But as soon as Sparkle on the Junk or Doha on the Doom end up going down, a lot of that execute potential that you really need against these high healing comps is, is lost, Vicky. Yeah, I'm thinking to myself, Jaws, right now, looking at the Dallas Fuel and how they were on attack versus how we what we just saw from the Outlaws. Even though they went for the same approach each time with those TPs, it allowed them, it enabled them to put a lot of pressure indirectly onto Dallas Duel because they knew that if they dropped down from that high ground, Sparkle would have had all the shields in the world to charge up that beam. We talked about that earlier before the series, and that was actually something that Outlaws considered when it came to that position. So as you get set up, Dallas Fuel, they're running that same type of composition we saw at the beginning. They have Sparkle on that sim, and they're going to be able to TP onto this high ground. Okay, quick rotation with the TP. That's how turrets though set up as soon as uh, Phyllis does go through, they need to destroy the turrets, otherwise they just melt you. Phyllis now oh, in. Look at Sparkle though, high charge on the high ground. Crimso's in trouble. Oh, it was oh, yeah. field. Look at all that damage coming out too, but it's gonna be Jericho who finds Fearless again. Happy coming out on nice top TV. with that sim. <laughs> we got the TP right next to each other. We, have, we, we could go the distance, right? We could go the distance, outlaws. And uh, going the distance. On 30 seconds remaining, Vicky, by the way. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, the Dallas Fuel have one attack. They're actually changing up half their comp too. That's three reset, four reset ultimates. Four. They have to win this fight extremely cleanly and concisely. They switch Fielder over to the Moira to try and build this call quickly. But they got 10 seconds remaining, Vicky, and they need to touch as well. And they know that if they get pulled over here, they're going They're going to opt to go through the back. Happy has that photon barrier, though, so they're happy to wary of that. There's the dive. Doha, Doha could be able to dive in here. Overtime ticking away. they got to stay on this point. It's Fearless who gets frozen. He's taking a lot of damage. He's forced out, and he gets taken out by Dante. Here comes the Outlaws fighting three. Humbin's going to meet them in the spawn. And unfortunately for the fuel, they won't be able to get this first point. It's going to be the Outlaws that come up on top, winning each team fight within that attack phase from the Dallas Fuel. That was incredible too. And Piggy with that Gravitic Flux and constantly controlling so much space with it. Not bad whatsoever. Clear win con now for the Outlaws to bring them one and one of the series. One minute and 44 seconds.
to collect 33% on point A. Okay, the Dallas Fuel, they made a wholesale swap up almost. They traded four in, got four, but lost all their ultimate charge in the process. Yeah. And I honestly, I feel like Fielder, if you went Arna there, it might have been more beneficial. The Nays can win you fights way easier than Fielder struggling to build up to a coalescence fairly early. I can see what they were doing. They wanted to just throw everything at the back line and try and kill one to two people. We had two of the DPS, uh, two of the DPS, like there's only more. Uh, the Dallas Fuel, uh, Doha and Sparkle were on the high ground. They try and go for a flank as Fearless jumps in, and then they throw damage or about all the uh, healing orb to help sustain them. But it just didn't end up working. An Arno there, I think, would have been a little bit better, but there's still a lot of mitigation too. There's definitely an argument for both, but Dallas Fuel, at the very end, could not make it happen. And now the Houston Outlaws, they're looking pretty good. This TP strap that they use, it takes a little bit of time to set yeah, set yourself up. It, it does. TP to high ground, then rotate, wait for another TP cooldown. But they only need, really, one successful attempt, right? And they've got two yeah. in them. And maybe two. It depends how fast they go. And the Outlaws doing so successfully on their initial attack here. Now it's their second time. With this time bank, they have a minute and 25. Pretty trying to get aggressive, though. Look at the Dallas Fuel and their positioning. They're trying to hold them back beyond this choke point. Meanwhile, though, that's actually giving Happy some charge, and now that's a free path to get onto this point with this teleporter. They've already annihilated the immortality field, but they've lost Crimso. He couldn't rotate with the rest of the outlaws over to the side. Meanwhile, Sparkle, he's got it too. He's got it both the tanks. It's going to be a reset for the outlaws. And that was a, a, almost a replication of what we had seen from the outlaws when the Dallas Fuel were on the attack. Now it's like rolls have been reversed. We spoke about how refined the Outlaws is, uh, are with their TPs. They spot, they spot a sliver, a sliver, a small chance to get onto the point without Dallas Fuel rotating on them. But Sparkle's quick on the draw as well with his own teleporter, getting them to the point just about the same time. And now Sparkle did a lot of damage. They got Shatter and they have that war. Teleporter on that the photon barrier. Go, let's see. Yeah, the photon barrier from Sparkle. Happy's going to get it soon as well. So just trickles down to how they're going to drop from this high ground because you you talk about the fuel and their resources here, Jaws, but you also have less than 30 seconds as the Houston Outlaws to try to get that first tick. It's right there. The opportunity's in sight, and now with this Ant Matrix, it's a window for a window. Jexy is about to get the sound barrier soon to allow the Dallas Fuel to hold down the fort. What a get a shatter coming in, though. It's finds to happy Piggy and Crimson. That's huge because now the rest of the fuel, fuel are going to send it forward from that sound barrier. They're going to delete the rest of the outlaws. And the outlaws, they had every opportunity, but the fuel recognizing the situation, they draw things out. And we have a draw for a map number two here in this Texas standoff. Jaws, what a series we have on our hands. And I know the crowd right now is going absolutely crazy in Arlington. Oh man, that wall, uh, that ice barrier from the May, from Doha, just unreal. The isolations he's finding are just ridiculous. Wow, Jigs are even finding the boop on Juby, who was using that rally there at the very end. Uh, he got player of the game for that too, no surprise. Wow, uh, what a defense from both sides to be fair too, but it all came down to that wall from the May isolating the Arissa, and then you just charge that beam up on those shields if you're Sparkle, and then you just run them down. And then Fearless, obviously, Cherry on top, hit the shatter, and that'll lead us to the draw. Map number three, Vicky, is the tense one. We knew it would be close, but we didn't think it would be this close. I'm so excited here, Jaws. We're going to see a map number three on the other side of this break. Don't go anywhere. We have a series on our hands between the Dallas Fuel versus the Houston Outlaws. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, America's largest and fastest 5G network. Set your sights on the competition with T-Mobile. And by Xfinity, the preferred internet provider of the Overwatch League.
Welcome back. And just like the summer, the competition is heating up. The ancient deity, Hero Ares, has landed just in time to celebrate the Summer Showdown Tournament. Get this legendary skin before July 19th for 200 League Tokens. I got some extra saved up, so definitely we'll be getting that. Guys, don't miss out on the sale. It's going to be from July 6th to the 19th. As we get set up here, Jaws. I'm just so Man. excited here. I'm just excited to see what we got going now. Aside from that really sick Ana skin, we got the yes. power rankings currently up on board. Cool. I love yeah, that yeah, skin. I know. It's probably one of my I favorite uh, Ana skins after Captain Amaria. Let's have a look at the power rankings though, Vicky, with uh, IBM Watson. Um, that's, oh, what is that? Oh yeah, that's yes, a very blue looking fuel. leaderboard. <laughs> <laughs> Tanbin Fearless Sparkle Field at Doha Jackson. Okay. Piggy's in there as well, though, I will say. Mm -hmm. Number six, not bad at all. We hyped Sigma up a little bit earlier on. Best Sigma stats in the league too. Guy's oh, an yeah. absolute beast on that one. But yeah, I mean, who can deny Dallas Fuel? Like those positions are ri ridiculous, honestly. They're the best team in the league currently, although it looks like it. And the Outlaws, they managed to get a draw on uh, the Hanamura. So we are guaranteed four maps now, Vicky, as we go on to Hollywood for our next one. No substitutions either. They want to bring their very best. And it's actually a little bit of a contrast to what we saw the Dallas Fuel at the very start of the season. We saw Rappel hopping in and out, changing in for Fielder, sometimes changing mm. in for Jexay. It, um, it was a little bit confusing at times, but it feels like the fuel, they found what they like to run. It is Fielder and Jexa, and who could really blame them? There was a one little mistake from Jexa getting picked uh, early on the first <laughs> point, but mistakes do happen. Hollywood is good for both styles of compositions and both styles of play too that the Outlaws and the Fuel are bringing. This dive versus this double shield. Of course, both with the Symmetras. The second point especially, with the dive, the control on the high ground is at the utmost importance. And yeah. the Dallas Fuel are definitely going to pip uh, Outlaws to the post there. But we do see them on defense first. So same kind of thing. There's, there's no way they change up this, this uh, hyper-aggressive style. They do actually just put Doha on the Echo instead. Yeah, and I, I actually like this. I w I'm wondering here if Dallas Fuel is opting to go for these changes after noticing how the Houston Outlaws uh, have done versus the sim rush beforehand i think we have seen uh the outlaws actually hard punish the tp strat when they played against their series with uh, the shock and the titans um specifically when you have jangu who is so consistent with those holds and then piggy with his accretion while you come out of the teleporter it's not a good time it's like you you get to open your eyes for two seconds and then that's it you're back in the spawn it's it's terrible but the, <laughs> yeah, <pretty much. laughs> yeah, the outlaws are consistent with that you know and so going into this uh, next map, Dallas Fuel, they've learned, they've taken some notes, they've learned a lesson, and Fearless on this Winston too, they're already getting set up by that choke point. Okay, so Outlaws are actually running out of the game with the uh, same aggressive dive here, it's just the difference between the Sombra and the Tracer. Humbin's already hacked, but you know, it's fine, he can get back, so no worries for him. Happy has already got 33% ult charge, but wow. that's a lot of ult charge this early on. Piggy has anti-nated as well. They do lack the pressure of the Tracer, however. Uh, not anymore, though, because uh, uh, Spark oh. was dead. So, <laughs> I mean, there you go. Caster cursed him a little bit there. <laughs> that's Bolton Fias down, too, from the fuel. Currently have the Outlaws making their way over, wasting no time on getting this point. They bring it up the first tick. The fuel, I don't think, are going to touch. Maybe you try to get a little aggressive, but at least they could have the opportunity to get onto the high ground and prioritize positioning for this next point. Yes, almost oh, definitely. Uh, like I mentioned, high ground is very important. The cart passes right underneath this small bridge. That was a very unlucky pick. I would like to uh, I'll probably go back in the replay viewer and actually have a look at how that pick actually happened because uh, Spark going down that early as a Tracer, not something you usually see as Tracer is a recall, of course. Happy's going to be able to set up big on this high ground. Just trying to cage straight into the EMP. It's going to be tough for the fuel to deny this. It's up to Vildred to stay all the way back. Oh, Nano in. Ooh, Take just being able to snipe that through. Fearless having the Nano boost, finding Juby with it too. Crimson also traded that with that nano boost. So the Dallas Fuel, though, they win in that interaction, but the payload's still moving, and they're still opting to have that high ground position, because what are you going to do? You're just essentially going to go through a canyon of death, and Sparkle has this pulse bomb, so you could take a look at where he's going to try to set in position, because he's already trying to find an opening on their back lines. Yeah, he is. He's going to be able to dive in with Fearless. Oh, does anybody see him? No, they do not. What a stick. What a kill. Juby ends up going down. 
Oh, Juvie, that was so unfortunate. Sparkle found the opportunity, found the victim in the back. Happy, though, is going to trade that for Fearless. With Juvie going down, he's in her. Trying to get back with the rest of the outlaws. Crimzo is still right there, and the duplicate has already been utilized. No, he's got the primal. And look at this positioning from Fuel. They've been able to kind of split some of the pieces from the outlaws, but the outlaws were still moving that payload. Specifically, uh, Jangu, who's taking a nap, actually, on the other side. He's also anti. He's taking a lot of damage. Somebody helped Jangu out. Well, he gets right out of that ante. Doha is still bringing this fight in the air. And Jaws, the Fuel are playing this a lot more slower, but the Outlaws were able to try to disengage her. They didn't want to lose too many heads. Yeah, it feels like Phyllis is everywhere at once. Dante transformed into the Ana to try and pocket his tanks. It's a very quick charging ultimate uh, nano boost, but he didn't manage to get it online. They were able to just focus him out really easily. It was in fact Doha that did just that, uh, using the Primal Rage copy. They're going to go for another engage here. Rally and Nano available for the Outlaws. And there is that engagement with the nano boost, but it's going to cost Crimson and Fielder fights Dante? All right, when you can't deal with the Neko, at least you got Fielder right there, right behind you, especially since Doha was out of that fight. Sparkle is going to be able to try to clean up the back lines. They don't want the Outlaws to move this fellow any more than they already have. Juby gets hit with an anti, and Jangu escapes with such low health, too. Sparkle is on a terror. Look at that. Finding Juby, too, following up from Fielder. They're also holding on to this rally. The Fuel have a lot of these tools to hold back the Outlaws. Meanwhile, they have to worry about Happy's EMP next. Yeah, luckily enough, the Outlaws have pushed the payload a fair distance. It's starting to creep back now, but the Outlaws, they want to go fast once more, but they're going to have to worry about Jexay's rally. Rallying early is perfect, but it's sometimes a little bit difficult to spot out the Sombra. Whoa, Happy's waiting in the wings. They're ready to oh, die. No. Oh, they didn't see him in the EMP hitting three. Hits Fearless. He won't use the Primal, and look how much damage he's taking. He goes down because Happy doesn't let him get away. Meanwhile, he drops down with the rest of the Outlaws pushing in, following up from that EMP. Jango gets put to sleep, but somebody just woke him up, and he was in the Primal too. Comes a Diva Bomb, doesn't hit anyone, but Sparkle instead finds these heads, finds Juby's heads, and Crimson's gonna meet him in the spawn. When you have everybody else getting hacked, you have to still worry about Sparkle, who has been able to be such a threat on the Dallas Fuel. The Outlaws now, it's back to the drawing room. Man, they, it did hit three people that EMP, but Jexay was able to get Rally off in time. It is a press queue to win button most of the time. Like, the armor is just too much for you to deal with, and it doesn't cancel the stacking up. Oh, it's so tough. You have to catch the brig <laughs> with the EMP. Oh, Picky got anti and Slicing with death just a little bit at 30 HP, but he's all right. Trying to get mech back. One minute and 45 seconds remains. The cart has moved a significant distance back as well, Vicky. So the Outlaws are going to have to regain a lot of that ground they took up before. That was just a funny look. It looked like the anti was coming in from like a mile away. <laughs> Picky just saw it was like, I'll get hit by it. It's okay. Doha gets hacked. He gets away though, and Happy actually gets punished with a sleep. A great save from Jengu. Jumping on top of Happy, sending out the dome. Protect Happy. Meanwhile, Dante, he popped the, the duplicate. He was trying to contest Fearless, who was trying to stall on that high ground before diving in while he was in the primal. Sparkle gets hacked. He gets eliminated too off camera. Jangu is just trying to drop down, trying to reposition because he wants to move his payload. While they're doing a really good job at holding back the field, they want to get some extra credit being able to move some of that payload, especially since you have less than a minute to get to point B. Yeah, they... Oh, they just got to do a little bit surfing okay. there. EMP's available. Oh, there it goes. It oh. only hits Fearless, though. And he falls back, too. He actually doesn't land on top of them. Happy's found Fearless. He doesn't let him get away again. That's another pick from Happy odds of Fearless. Sparkle gets a retaliation onto Happy. The Dallas Fuel, they're still leading in numbers, and the Pulse Bomb is definitely going to do it in. The Outlaws have now less than 30 seconds to contest this last fight to at least get this payload to that second point. There were questions about Sparkle's Tracer coming into the season with the lack of hit scan and the lack of a, a Tracer player, but he is proving just time and time again that his Tracer is phenomenal. The Outlaws now have 15 seconds to go. They've got Nanny, they've got Self Destruct as well. It's about assailing this high ground, trying to get up. They nanoed the Echo. It looks like they wanted to try and nano Jungle, but he missed. Uh, yeah, that, I think I think Dante just literally just swooped right in front of that line of sight. That's unfortunate because Dante couldn't really do much other than try to reposition the fuel. Meanwhile, the fuel, they funneled onto Outlaws and Crimson's by himself in the back. There was nobody there to help him because they... Hello? The payload? Small oh, the Outlaws 
Ghost were like, okay, you guys can deal with our supports in the back. They are the sacrifice necessary to try to at least get this payload to the second point. And they have all the tools with this ultimate to actually delay this fight, to wait on the rest of the outlaws to make their way over here. Uh -oh. Dante's got an anti and he's already utilized a duplicate. He's taking a quick nap. The fuel are dealing with him and they've dealt with Jangu too. Currently, the outlaws, they had a plan, but it just did not go according to that plan. The fuel, they were distracted for just two seconds before they realized the situation that was going down. It was a good trade, though, to be fair. I mean, you had Chexa in the back line of the outlaws taking care of their support, and then they're able to utilize the, uh, the movement of Fearless just to get back to the point and jostle it. A quick duplication into the Brig, too. Feels pretty good. If you're though high, just start swinging away. And they also nanoed the... Um, the Brig 2, so that, yeah, you're not going to kill it. There's no way. There, there is absolutely no way you're, you're killing a Nano Brig. <laughs> and the Outlaws, they do manage to push it near to that second point, but now the Golden Box of Victory and the, uh, the win condition here for Fuel is very evident. The Outlaws struggled so much when trying to deal with Winston. Even, to be fair, the, the support line of the Fuel, how is Jexet able to get to the back line of the Outlaws? Like I said, it was a trade. There was a lot of space gained from the Outlaws and a lot of time on that cart, and they almost pushed it into second, but the the comp from the fuel is so... Well, it's very mobile, so you can get back to the point rather quickly. Oh, man. Uh, th it's definitely not the strongest comp for Outlaws. Definitely not. The, the double shield is their forte, hands down, so it was always going to be an upwards hill battle, but they're still finding plays. They're still making moves here. Uh, Happy's EMPs, they've been fairly successful, but just the follow-up after the EMP connection, that's where the Outlaws are lacking right now. The fuel, they just know exactly what to do, how to kite it. Fearless is just sometimes getting solo EMP'd. I mean, Jexay is just saving the team with Fielder as well. Those rallies are getting uninterrupted and he's living a life of luxury right now. You would think it'd be difficult too when you have Happy landing those EMPs, finding these hacks onto Sparkle. It's just not really working out. Yeah, you talk about the follow, that's really what the only thing that's lacking right now from the silver composition that they want to go in. And Anti onto Juby, and a hack onto Hanbin. Juby is forced to play a little bit more patiently. He gets out of the Anti, and now it's Doha with the focusing beam. Talk about focus, it's Sparkle, who also puts on a lot of that damage. They trade monkeys here, and the Dallas Fuel. Hanbin is taking a lot of damage, and Doha is currently hacked. Hopefully Doha can get out of the situation. He's got Jexy right here, but he's anti himself, so he doesn't want to overextend. They've managed to take the first take already. The Outlaws are not trying to overextend. They're waiting for the rest of the Outlaws before they just go in for another re-engage. A huge anti three man anti. three. Yeah, but onto Jangu, Piggy, Juvi taking a lot of damage again. They have the Nano Boost. Fielder is going to pop the Nano Boost before Crypto even has the chance because Sparkle is out here getting a 3k. Not only did he wipe the support lineup, but he wiped out Jingu too. Can anyone stop Sparkle? Because right now, he has just been so consistent, putting on so much damage onto Outlaws' backline. Oh, he is so good at video games. Oh my <laughs> god, Sparkle is an absolute beast. The Outlaws, though, they've got a lot of tools in their back pocket. They've got EMP. It's unfortunate that Happy wasn't able to capitalize on the very early amount of charge that he got. He just can't get that last 10, 20% to try and turn the fight. They got Nana, they got EMP, they got Rally coming up as well. EMP is Ooh. three. Field is dead already. Ooh. That was a great, that's a follow up I want to see from Piggy specifically right there. They got the EMP, they got Fielder out. Now Chixie is going to be able to have the Rally with Fearless falling asleep. Doha has the duplicate. He's already got the Diva Bomb too. Just trying to find the opportunity here. And another anti. These antis have been so consistent from Crimzo too. Jekyll's found Jexy and Doha's gonna trade that with a Diva Bomb pick onto Piggy. You hate to see it. And now the Outlaws, they're desperately holding on to this payload, Jaws. They're trying their best. Dante is still finding some picks, but you talk about these tracers, you talk about these threats, we have to refer to Sparkle again. And the way that Sparkle is playing right now, just not letting these supports have any fun from the Outlaws. Yeah, every misstep, like every slight two-frame overstep from Juvi or Crimzo, and they end up going down. Fela spots them out of position, and him and Sparkle just tag team and just boom, right on top, and they just destroy them. Uh, Juvi is not having a good time whatsoever right now. The rallies have been fairly effective, mind you. It's just after the rallies, when it dissipates, he's left himself in a position where he just gets dove on. Another dive's coming in. Fela's is on the back line already. 
Oh, Fearless stole, got not only put to sleep, got hit with an anti, even though he got nano boosted there. Had to back out of that situation. Hembin's also found happy, which is big, because that would have actually led into this next round of EMP that the Outlaws actually could have utilized to hold back the fuel, since they're so close to getting to that golden box, that finish line. Dallas Fuel, they're egging themselves on. They're able to see Piggy, though, who's found Fielder. That's a huge pick, because that's going to put a dent to the Fuel's plants. That's going to take away, possibly, from their time bank. Piggy's been popping off. Not only got that Diva Bomb pick, but also eating Sparkle's Pulse Bomb. We've seen how lethal that Pulse Bomb has been, and he's still finding these heads from the Fuel. He's officially found Sparkle, not just his Pulse Bomb. And we're also having a skirmish in the back. And Dohog win? All right, all right. He won the, he won the skirmish against Crimson. He won that 1v1. And... Now the Outlaws, they get revenge for him. They take out Doha, but the Outlaws can now get back into position. But the Fuel are wasting no time. Look, look, look at their position. They're already on the high ground. That was a lot of time bought out by Crimzo. Holy, holy moly. That was an uh, extremely good survivability. Oh, Phyllis in with the Primer Rage. Vicky, it's just nonstop action. Jungu's dead. What? Jumi's using the rally, though, to keep the team alive. Every single time we get one of these witches jumping in, it is just not a good time. You start the initiation, but then that nano boost just isn't enough. Hanbin now with the pick onto Juby with the Diva Bomb. Dante doesn't land that sticky with the Pulse Bomb, but he's on their back line. He's trying to find and isolate Fielder before Fielder gets that nano boost. Hanbin also gets hit with an anti and with Doha on the Sober. They're just trying to contest that with Happy. They have a plan up their sleeve and Fearless has that nano boost. They're wasting even more time from the ability of Outlaws to hold this payload back. They're just trickling in and the fuel, despite another big anti onto Sparkle and Fielder, there's not enough of the Outlaws to hold back this payload. Dallas Fuel secure the victory on Hollywood. Two to zero in this series. Match point at the homestand as well. The crowd going crazy and not too much of a surprise. Oh boy, this is what we wanted to see. Pure aggro, hyper aggression from the fuel and they're making it work. Oh, I, I just can't understate how good um, the Dallas Fuel are playing right now. And Sparkle, yeah, he's getting a ton of highlight plays for sure. But you know who's staying alive? The back line. The back yeah. line of the Dallas Fuel. Fielder stayed alive in that last fight for so long. He was, he was like playing Splinter Cell. There were two people from the Outlaws around him, but he was just like, oh, I'm not gonna shoot them. Well, he was, you know, shooting them a little bit, but he just stayed alive without them noticing him. He got the Nano onto Fearless and that ended the game. Like the, the focus fire from the Outlaws there, it felt like they just needed to turn a little bit to the left and they might have seen Fielder who was just all alone. Wow, what, what a series so far. Dallas Fuel, 2-0 up, match point at their own homestand. We're gonna jump to a break. This could be the final map, Vicky. We'll see you in a bit. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League.
Welcome back after that break. Vicky, here we are. We're going over to Watchpoint. And of course, there'll be an Outlaws fan in the crowd. There just has to be at least one. And I see the Washington Justice jersey at the back there as well. He might be feeling a little bit down with himself currently, but hey, they still got to have hope. Outlaws, they're not out just yet. <laughs> Imagine going wearing a different team jersey to the actual bench. Like, I, I commend that. I love that spirit too, because that is that, that classic Texas spirit right there. Especially since I think I made mention of it earlier that uh, Houston and Dallas, they're not that far apart. They're as closely uh, like related to distance to uh, where I'm from Miami to Orlando too, where I think is where the Florida Mayhem is currently at. But yeah, no. Anyways, the fact that they're so close um, in terms of cities, I'm not surprised to see an, outlaw, uh, an Outlaws fan here. We made mention too that uh, the Outlaws were having their own Watchpoint party, so maybe uh, having that uh, the ability to see one of their fans and the crowd may get them super hyped. <laughs> yeah. Who knows it's what's gonna going on? It's going to put their spirits on us for sure. There's a spy <laughs> in the midst. Okay, let's go back to the series, Vicky. At hand, Dallas Fuel right now. Match point as we head into this map. 2-0 off that draw on Hannah Mora too. And we're heading on to Gibraltar too. I mean, this is, yeah, this, this is the hunting ground, I think, of the fuel. The Outlaws had not looked uh, up to scratch compared to the fuel on these dive comps. Their main style of play has been the double shield over the last couple of months. Their dive hasn't looked so uh, as spectacular. And Gibraltar is just a perfect map for, for the Dallas fuel. I, I'd hedge my bets right now on them, but hey, anything can happen. The Hanamora draw, not some kind of fluke. The Outlaws did play that to perfection too. So it all comes down to this. They need to keep themselves in the series. And Vicky as well, whoever wins this is going on to the Summon Showdown too. Yeah, you know, being able to have that spot secured eases your worries too. So you have to consider as we go on to Watchpoint, this is the opportunity for the Dallas Fuel to secure that spot. And while we're talking about Watchpoint Gibraltar, I believe this is a map where like the Fuel have been 80% consistent winning on this map, like just within the season. But like you take a look at Houston Outlaws, they also are undefeated on this map. So you take that statistics to mind and you consider the fact that the Outlaws may actually find this map in their pocket if they could remain with that confidence going forward into the series. Because the Fuel at the moment, I feel like they're playing out of their minds. The Outlaws aren't even playing bad. It's just, I'm honestly, from what I'm seeing, the Fuel just seems as if they have their number. They know exactly what they're going to do. And they're mixing things up. They're not running the composition that I feel like the Outlaws were anticipating. Seeing how the Fuel were really, really Heavily leaning towards SMTP mostly within their last series. One. See how they want to approach this start off. The uh, TPs across. Oh, nice little anti. And Dante switched over to the Tracer straight away, but Juby's already been killed. I mean, that first blood came so fast. Um, they saw the TP across, and uh, with Jungu jumping up into high ground, they're like, well, wow, we can just go. Uh, Jungu's not there to protect them. Perfect little kill to start uh, things off for the fuel, holding it extremely close because they can. It's all about juggling time on the payload if you're fearless, Vicky. Just jumping down, contesting for as long as possible. Same with Doha too. He's put himself in car wash. He's got that mega health pack hacked as well. Django's going to have the hardest time getting on this high ground. Those uh, whip shots from Jexa landing their mark time and time again. And we've seen Doha make that swap over to the Sombra at the end of the last map too. So being able to have some of that consistency going into this new map here. They have to try to deal with Sparkle, who's really low right now. They have that health pack that you may mention of that he could retreat to. Whoever hacked it first, pretty sure that was Doha before Happy was even able to get into that situation. Outlaws trying to at least secure this car wash, get this payload over to the other side, because it's always tricky when you have to deal with this team like the Dallas Fuel right now, where the position is on that high ground, because you're essentially you're just looking down on a team that is just vulnerable. Dante might be in trouble. He didn't realize the health pack was still hacked. Nano in for Jungu. Oh, this is the opportunity here with the Nano Boost. Jungu having to try to contest the Nano Boost and Fearless. Crimzo 2 had already used that Nano Boost and Sparkles found Jungu in the back. Dallas Fuel already up with a member down from the Outlaws. Sparkle also has a pulse bomb. He's trying to get into position. If he could find the back line here, he sees Juby. He sees where Crimzo is. He just needs to have that opportunity. They try oh, to hack him. They close. caught him out. That was super close. It was almost like a shark just looking for that perfect meal, just to dive right in. So you're going to see he does have that pulse bomb. He just needs to find that opportunity. Yeah, he, he has that mini health pack as well. 
which is kind of nice. Well, not Sparkles, sorry. The Outlaws have that many health back, so it's uh, one less place to retreat to. Oh. EMP's massive, though. Ooh. His three. Can they find a, a follow up? Oh, looking difficult here because Crimson Juby get away, and Sparkle doesn't get the stick with the pulse bomb. Fearless is also anti, but he has the primal to retreat right back towards the rest of Dallas. He gets hacked all in the process, but that's just going to lead into hand being a huge EMP, finding four, and then the anti to follow up from that onto the support line that didn't get hit with the EMP. It's almost like a double whammy when you're the outlaws, and they're just trying to get some of that extra credit, but Jaxie stayed alive as he has time and time again. He's got the rally, although he gets hacked out of it, he still has the rally activated. because That's a nice grab. The grab, yeah, Huge. from Hamden, they Piggy found Jungkook. Jungkook. Outlaws, they're taking so much damage. Jungkook going down again for this fight is just not the way that Outlaws want to play into this. And Juby's going down too. They'll have a rally into the next fight here, Jaws. But the Dallas Fuel, they didn't even burn everything that they had because they still have Fuel there with the Nano Boost. They're going to put on some Fearless. Yeah, one minute remaining as well for the Outlaws. The Dallas Fuel have been juggling these ults so well. They're going to have an EMP. They're going to have a Pulse Bomb for this last fight. A Nano to start it off as well. It's up to Juby. Can he stay alive in this final engagement and pop the rally to save the rest of his team? If this EMP or a hack from Doha lands on him, this could be all over. Oh, here comes a Nano Boost too, and the rally is going to get activated and anti onto the support line of the Outlaws. Fearless also has that Primal to go for a reset. But take a look at the less than 30 second time bank that the Outlaws have to work with. Meanwhile, Sparkle tries to go for a pulse bump, but Piggy eats it all up. Constantly trying to find Sparkle and Fearless now finding Dante EMP onto the tank lineup of the Outlaws too. This is going to not only take way more time away from the Outlaws, but now they only have less than 10 seconds to even touch the payload. Yeah, this might be just GG here. Honestly, that EMP was uh, rather, I wouldn't say late, but it was uh, perfectly on time. Juby had already used his rally in the previous fight because he got naded. A couple of seconds remaining. Happy's going to be out to touch. He causes OT, has an EMP to his name as well in 5%. He got melted there too. And Juby making a swap over to the Lucio. Get Outlaws right back into the action quickly. Jangu also was hacked and got hit by the anti. While he does have that Primal activated, an EMP onto Humbin and Doha. It cost Doha his life, and the Outlaws are finally finding these heads for the fuel. It was taking them a bit, but at least better late than never, I always say. Piggy finding two. Outlaws looking a lot stronger. They're going to be able to build into this next set of ultimates for the second point, but this is a difficult situation because now Outlaws are going to be able to have that position advantage on top of the ship in comparison to the fuel. Excellent use of Primal Rage there by Jungu. Hit it at the perfect time. He got anteed and hacked pretty much at the same time. It felt like he um, saw the hack coming in, instantly pressed Q. Hit Primal, made sure he could stay alive. Enough time for Happy to build up towards that EMP and land a big one. Oh, okay, Pulse Bomb goes a little bit wide. The top of the ship control is extremely important. You can snowball very quickly if you're able to control high ground, Ooh. but six man EMP! Ooh. The six man EMP and Dante going down the follow up from Jexay. Wow, all right. And Piggy gets double hacked too at the same time. Dante couldn't even pull the trigger on the pulse bomb. Despite that, the fuel not only having that position advantage, you currently still have the Houston Outlaws finding some of these picks, but it's not going to be enough when you have to deal with Sparkle and Doha now. That was insane here. Great EMP from Doha. And now the Houston Outlaws are forced to reset. What? Okay, Fielder ends up going down. I mean, can the fuel actually kill Crimzo? Yeah, okay, uh -huh. yeah, the, yes they can, yes they can. The answer is yes. Uh, challenge, very easy. Uh -huh. <laughs> Instant grab <laughs> kills Crimzo. That would have been extremely bad. If Fielder goes down there and Crimzo and Juby make out alive, easy engagement for the Houston Outlaws. They just jump right in. They know the fuel didn't have uh, a lot of healing. But luckily enough, they do use the grab, secure the kill on Crimzo, reset that tempo as well. One minute remains for the Outlaws. Happy's got that EMP coming online. Same with Doha, only a little bit behind. One of the best uh, Sombras in the world still is. Can he outmatch Happy here? He landed a six-man last time. Doha, it's all up to you. Oh, they're trying to bring this Tracer 1v1, though. Over to Sparkle and Dante. Meanwhile, Jangu with the... And Nano Boost and diving in, he's found Sparkle. That's enough to swipe him away like a fly. Sending him back, just trying to get this payload moving. But they have to deal with the Dallas Field that are in this ship. They are going to have that high ground position. Doha trying to get on the high ground, but actually just opted to go for the EMP right away here. Does find Dante. Happy's going to retaliate with a bigger EMP, which finds four. That's going to cost Fearless his life. And Jex is going to get hacked right after utilizing that rally. Outlaws have been finding so many members of the Dallas Fuel with Fearless and Doha going down that Doha is going to make a swap over to the Echo. Jexy is going to get anti. He They're somehow survives, this. 
But yeah, Piggy goes down too. The Dallas Fuel, they were able to hold on. And look at the amount of damage that Hanbin is going to be able to put down onto the Outlaws. Stop their rotation onto this payload. They push it into overtime, Jaws. And now it's desperate times. Call for desperate measures. The Outlaws, though, won't have Jongu to be in this fight. Instead, they have to look at this grab in the face and deal with the amount of damage coming in from both Doha and Hanbin. Oh my word, every fight is winnable. Literally every fight is winnable if you are the fuel. The Outlaws, they counter EMP perfect. They, they use the EMP straight after Doha uses it. But it doesn't matter because who stays alive and who stays unhacked, ready to nano? Well, it's Fielder. And as soon as Hanbin is nano, he's already at 100 charge or near about like, your Azaria against these dive comps, you're going to get a lot charged rather quickly. Uh, everybody's shooting at you and everybody else around you gets nanoed and he just steamrolls through. And the problem with a nano Zaya or like dealing with one is that you have to get down her bubbles first. She then has the damage mitigation, plus she has two supports at her back. Uh, there is nothing to stop Azaria when she's high charge, she has nano, she's one shotting people with right click, basically. I mean, that's disaster. Perfect setup for the EMP for Happy though. For the Outlaws, again, we spoke about it in Hanamura. They can't really find these follow-ups. They find nice engagements and they find nice targets to EMP, but they can't follow up with anything meaningful and they end up just kind of falling over. The Dallas Fuel, once again, are in a position where that golden box of victory and the battle for Texas could be theirs, Vicky. They are one map away, or one round away even. Yeah. Houston Outlaws get it fairly far in the second point. But if this fight near first for the Fuel is concise enough, and they get a nearer team wipe, they can take high ground, and then it's a whole bunch of free real estate after that. Imagine making it into the knockout round in front of all of your fans. I know that the Dallas Fuel is hearing these wars. They're feeling powered up. Basically saying, I hope you are ready, y'all, because we're diving right into this Western mess. Houston Outlaws getting into position on the high ground, though. They're just trying to stop the Dallas Fuel from rotating over to the side. Humbin getting hit with a fat anti. He takes a lot of that damage here. Take a look at the way that Dallas are playing as patiently as we had seen from the fuel before, but currently dropping down as Jango could get right back in, but it's just trying to get some of that extra charge for Piggy, but wow, big anti, and that's actually gonna cost Jaxi's life and Fielder at the same time as Dante goes in for that follow-up. Great way to waste some time away from the Dallas fuel following up yeah, after that sure. anti with the tracer. Crimzo has been a shining star for the Outlaws all year long. His honor is crazy good. A backbone for the team, most definitely his antis, his nanos, his ability to stay alive is one of the reasons why Outlaws are doing so well this season. Now they're engaged, he's got nano online just before Fielder does. And Happy also has the EMP too, so maybe waiting for that opportunity as they go through the car wash. Here comes the nano boost though. Jangu is going to be able to hold it in. He does get the EMP. It's fine. Both of the supports and Fielder and Jesse go down. Now he gets stuck by the Pulse Bomb. But the Outlaws with Jangu tearing through this front line of the fuel. There's nobody left to actually stay in this fight. He makes sure that Sparkle can't get back into the spawn too. So they got some of that extra credit at the very end. Very nice. They did expend three big ults. However, <laughs> that Nano, that EMP, and the Primal Rage. They got a good combo coming up. They got Grav, Pulse. They can manage to get Fearless before he gets Primal Rage, or a better target here would actually be Hanbin. Or after he uses Bubbles, they're going to be good. There it is, instantly. Oh, oh well, the bubble follow up to the grab into the pulse bomb. That was just way too much damage. Fielder and they wasted too. nano as well, Vicky. The nano boost, yeah, they, they, try to, they try to use a nano boost actually to power through the grab damage and it just was not it. Yeah, they used the nano onto Jexit to try and keep him alive. Not sure they expect the Pulse Bomb to come in. I mean, they used the bubble. That's the perfect time to go. You see the Zari using the uh, personal bubble. Boom, you just grab her. That bubble is going to either die instantly because everybody's shooting at the grab, or it's just going to dissipate. Pulse Bomb straight on top. Cherry on top. Insta-kill uh, for two people. Now Harvey's building up towards another EMP. Outlaws rotating the rocks perfectly here. Oh, and another big EMP, though, coming down from Doha. Finding four. It's going to cost Jangu to go down. Meanwhile, Fearless. He's tearing it up over to the side room. He gets hacked, so he's forced to back off. And Sparkle gets a stick onto Juby, gets that Pulse Bomb pick. So we follow up too, considering the fact that Doha was right there to get a hack at the same time. So the Outlaws, it's back to square one. You want to make sure you can reposition for the second point, because look at the way that the field playing. They're not letting the Outlaws get away. They know that they have bad positioning right now, have a bad spawn, so they're going to take full advantage of it. Yeah, this is what I said. If you get a clean team wipe or you're close to a clean team wipe, you can take spaceship control. And they have done already. 
They have the shuttle. The payload's moving already, and now you have a lot of free real estate. Plus, Doha switching to the Echo, making use of that high ground, the burst damage too, to try and take out these tanks. Ooh. EMP's gonna come out, hits five. Ooh, it's finding Doha, as Doha was trying to actually track that placement right there, and now Jangu has this primal, but he gets deleted. Juxi making sure that Jangu is out of this fight. They do have the Nano Boost from Primzo and Juby, but the Dallas Fuel are now letting it loose. Now with the Nano Boost too, and the grab to follow up. Fearless is right there, trying to punch their way in. Sparkle gets that Pulse Bomb pick onto Juby again. This is like the third Pulse Bomb pick of the map that Juby unfortunately falls victim to. Look at this payload right now, Joss. It's right there, and there's nobody from the Outlaws to stop them. The Dallas Fuel, they win the Texas Showdown again versus the Houston Outlaws, except this time they do it in front of all of their fans back in the Arlington Esports Stadium. The home crowd, 3-0 for the fuel. What more could you ask for if you're in the Arlington Stadium right now? The fans are going crazy and they should. The Dallas Fuel, one of the best teams in the world right now with the best players on their rolls too. 3-0 against the Outlaws. They secure their place in the Summer Showdown as well. Clean, concise Overwatch. Wow, I'm shaking after that. Just because of the way the Outlaws played, that were so was so good too. The EMPs coming in, but when you have a team like the Dallas Bull, they are so much better with everything that they do so far within the league, I feel like, Just I could just say that confidently. They're more consistent. Other than like the Dragons and how they're going down like with their composition in APAC, this team right now, Dallas Fuel, they have it all. They're popping off. These Antis coming in, these EMPs, these Pulse Bombs, it's just so lethal when you have to play a team like the Dallas Fuel. And you have to imagine too, with the crowd going wild after probably every single pick that they had going down, everyone was probably making so much noise in the arena. And they loved it, they felt that, because it's been so long since we've been able to see some of these teams perform in person. Yeah, Otto, you see Doha at the end there, just giving the thumbs down to the Outlaws. That's what you love to see. I said how they are so animated. They are so, there's so many like lovable characters on the uh, on the Dallas Fuel, honestly, whether they're in or out of game. It's a fantastic experience that the fans are able to sit in front of their home team and just cheer for them live in an arena. Congratulations, Dallas Fuel. They've made it to the Summer Showdown, Vicky. Yeah, they're, they're going to be able to move on to those knockouts. And now with the Dallas Fuel, feeling comfortable, feeling confident that they're going to be able to make it into this type of bracket for the third time so far this season is just absolutely insane. And why don't we take a look at one of the members from the Dallas Fuel, Sparkle, who's going to be our player of the match presented by Xfinity. And it's to no surprise here too, Jaws. I was hyping up this player just for the reason that he was so consistent, not only with these pulse bomb sticks, but just in general with getting a follow-up, following from those antis too that we had seen from Fielder. I, I like this team a lot. I've liked them from the very start when I saw them in the Bay Melee, but you know, confirming here as we go through some changes for each stage that this team is just insane. They're so great when it comes to adapting to so quick with it. Yeah, they, they're on their way to potentially win another tournament. And Sparkle Tracer had a lot of questions over, uh, over in the last few months, I'd say, but I mean, Really silly. You, you, like, you watched the last few games. Like, there's no way this guy's Tracer should be questioned now. Absolutely not. MVP of the match, or player of the match, even. Sparkle, another hype DPS player from last year coming in from Element Mystic. And one now sitting at one of the best DPS in the world, hands down. Congratulations to him for another, I mean, another player of the match. He's going to keep getting him, that is for sure. Looks like they're <laughs> setting up a quick interview with him as well, so that'll be nice. And the fans being there also, just uh, being able to kind of connect with the players too and actually see them in person is all good and well. And I love that we could just continue to have this amazing production with the league, but having it in a home venue like that, oh boy, I, I can't imagine anybody has uh, not missed it. I mean, I again, I said it earlier, I've said it before for the Spark when they hosted the homestand, uh, you know, just a few weeks ago. I haven't been.
been able to experience this yet and seeing everybody out in these crowds just makes me so excited. I feel so passionate looking at the state of these fans and, and when it comes to these Overwatch teams and the support that they're going to be getting when they come back to these live events. It's only going to go up from here, Jaws, but what a series to conclude our second day here for week number 13 for North America. It's been such a good time casting these two series. Honestly, was thinking that it could have gone down to the wire. The Houston Outlaws, this is such a strong team. Despite them constantly facing this wall that is the Dallas Fuel, you still want to make sure that the Outlaws are on top of the game because they have been. They've been pretty consistent themselves. It's just the Dallas Fuel are just better, Jaws. Um, and I'm really excited to see what the Owls are going to have going forward with the rest of the Summer Showdown. Yeah, it's going to be a good one for sure. The level of play has just uh, been elevated every single time. We're going to jump to a break, though, guys. Don't go anywhere. Got more Overwatch action coming in. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, America's largest and fastest 5G network. Set your sights on the competition with T-Mobile.
Welcome one and all to our Watchpoint Post Show presented by IBM. Zoe here joined by the crew and we're here to break down all the action. I mean, honestly, a Dallas versus Houston match just never disappoints, does it? And this one, uh, even though it was Dallas Fuel taking it, uh, you know, it, it's just the way they got it done. Now, before we dissecting the action, we will, of course, have a quick word with one of the players. So Danny is actually standing by to have a chat with Sparkle, I believe. Let's go. Hello. Hey, what's up, Sparkle? Hey, Dallas. I'm sh Welcome to the Watchpoint Potion presented by IBM. We're joined now, as you guys can all see, Sparkle from Dallas Fuel. Congratulations on the win. And before we get started, Sparkle, um, I saw your walkout dance. Uh, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was the 0-2 dance. It's like a famous TikTok or some kind of dance <laughs> that's famous in Asia. Um, I really... I'm really a I'm really big fan of it and I really loved your dance. Can you just show me and everyone around the world that dance one more time? 그 저희 이제 인터뷰 시작하기 전에 오늘 그딱그 입장 하시면서 봤는데 춤이 제 생각으로 봤던 게 제로투 댄스였던 것 같은데 제가 그거 굉장히 팬이라서 그 춤을 한 번만 더 뒤에 있는 팬분들을 위해서 한 번만 더 선사해 주실 수 있나 해서요. 부탁드립니다. 오케이. 잠시만 기다려주세요. Alright, we're waiting. <웃음> <laughs> nice view. <laughs> Round of applause, everybody. Yeah, thank you so much, Sparkle. Great way. What a great way to start the interview. Ah, 방금 춤 너무나도 감사드리면서 이제 인터뷰 시작하도록 하겠습니다. All right, my first question for you is: This was the first ever homestand for you, Sparkle. Um, how was it to play in front of your beautiful Dallas Fuel fans? 첫 번째 질문 좀더 쉬운 걸로 일단 좀 시작을 해볼게요. 오늘 홈스탠드 첫 홈스탠드 경기였는데 이렇게 팬들 앞에서 경기를 하신 소감 한 말씀 부탁드릴게요. 아 진짜 홈스탠드는 처음이고 오프라인 경기는 거의 1년 반 만인데 와 진짜 팬분들 오랜만에 보니까 진짜 지, 약간 열심히 안 하면은 죽어야겠다 약간 그런 생각으로 진짜 열심히 일했습니다 너무 좋았어요 Alright, this was definitely my first ever homestand ever in the Overwatch League and for an offline event this was, I think it was about, the last one I had was about a year and uh, and six months ago. So it was definitely really great to play in front of the fans. And also, I had this mentality and from the energy that I got from the fans, I felt like if I didn't perform my best, they would kill me. So I was sort of afraid and I had that big energy from them. So I really put out everything that I had for the match. Awesome. Oh, I hear the fans going crazy. Um, amazing, amazing. All right, let's move on to the second question. Um, did you change your initial game plan for this match against Houston Outlaws after watching them uh, play yesterday? 자, 두 번째 질문, 질문은 오늘 경기에 대한 건데요. 오늘 휴스턴과의 경기를 어제 경기를 보셨을지 모르겠지만 오늘 이렇게 들어오면서 어제 경기 휴스턴의 경기를 보고 난 후에 좀, 어, 좀 재정이나 좀 어떤 걸좀 바뀐 게 있나요? 어, 바뀐 거는 있긴 한데 저희가 또 뭡니까? 델러스는 메타 아니겠습니까? 뭘 하든 휴스턴에 팰 준비를 했었어요. Alright. I mean, what can I what can I say? Dallas is the meta. So, I mean, we were prepared even before their map uh, their previous match. We were before to beat down the Houston Outlaws even before they played yesterday because Dallas is meta. And last but not least, one more thing. I'm doing a little bit, fav little bit of a favor for you, Sparkle, because you're in front of your beautiful Dallas Fuel fans. If you have anything that you want to say to the fans right now, uh, behind you and in front of, in, a, in all over the world, I can translate for you. So go ahead, Sparkle. 자 마지막으로는 질문이 아니고 어, 오늘 또 홈, 처음 홈스탠드에다가 또 이제 뒤에 팬분들도 계시고 또 지금 안 계신 뭐 한국이나 전 세계에 있는 달라스 팬들에게 어, 한 말씀 하시고 싶은 말씀 있으시다면 지금 하시면 됩니다. 제가 통역을 해드리도록 하겠습니다. 저희가 여기까지 이렇게 열심히 할수 있었던 이유는 다이 팬분들 덕분이라고 생각하고 또 계속 이렇게 달려 나갈 테니까 계속 응원해 주시고. 오늘 아침을 안 먹었는데 아 오늘 오늘 아침 안 먹은 게좀잘된거 같네요. 아침밥이 참 두둑해요 지금. 아우 텍사스 맛있다. 아 휴스턴 맛있다. 
All right, so I, I just want to first off start off by saying that we are here and we got here because of the Dallas Fuel fans. So thank you so much. We're just going to keep on doing our best. We're going to keep on running in the Overwatch League and in all the tournaments. And I just want to say I didn't have breakfast today and I'm very thankful for that because, you know, just I'm just very full from gobbling up Houston Outlaws. So I am very full and I am thankful that I didn't have any breakfast. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much, Paco. Thank you so much for the interview. Paco 선수 인터뷰 너무 감사드리고 승리 다시 한번 너무나 축하드립니다. 감사합니다. Texas Super. Thank you. Let's head back to the desk. <laughs> thank you so much, Danny. Thank you so much, Sparkle. And of course, thank Incredible. you to everyone in that crowd. You guys just put the biggest smiles on our faces. Like, oh, we can't be with you right now in person, which is a shame. But that just made oh my, my day. God. Like, I, I literally, thumbs, my face like, hurts. I, this is amazing. I was hearing the fans. Uh, behind Sparkle and just I just got that energy too. I know we're remote, but like just it's just transferred over. I know, right? And I was getting so excited doing my life. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a mood boost! Yeah. I thought it was my cold mood, but it was fast. Those Sparkle moves, though. We could still hear them uh, in the background. Like big, <laughs> big, big shout out. Also, great camera work there. Uh, I I'm impressed. I didn't know he's uh, uh, quite a dancer like that. But uh, yeah, today oh, yeah. we learned. Uh, yeah, no, but hey, like this match is everything. Love the post game interview, love the crowd. I love that they were able to play in front of a crowd again. It's, you know, it's not back to normal yet, but we are getting there. That makes me very, very hopeful because it's just not the same if we don't have the fans in the same room with us. It makes all the difference. Uh, so I'm pretty sure I speak for everyone here. But the game itself, though, it was fast paced, it was action packed. Yeah. I think we had a lot of great stand up performances from a lot of different players on both sides, actually. But the ones which really stood out for me, I mean, Fielder kind of got robbed there. Like, those nades, oh. chef's kiss. Like, actually, get yourself a Fielder in your team. Like, why wouldn't you? <laughs> I mean, I feel like Dallas Fuel today, they just popped up. They went full Super Saiyan mode. I think it was like Crowd Diff plus. <laughs> Homestand buff plus fan buff. I don't know what it was. I mean, you mentioned Fielder's Ana, uh, Sparkle was popping off. Fearless, of course. Doha, of course. I think every single player on the Dallas Fuel, they just had a really great game on individual level and as a team as well. Because whatever Houston threw at them, they were ready for it. And, you know, they weren't afraid. So they went in and they were able to clutch the win. Uh, quickly on the Houston Outlaw side, I still believe they had an amazing game as well. Uh, they just felt short a little bit, um, but I personally think yesterday's match against Boston Uprising was a sort of a wake-up call because compared to yesterday, Houston, I personally think they didn't look as lost as they did yesterday. They were ready, they had a game plan, and they weren't afraid to switch things around. So that was a really good look for them. And unfortunately, if I if I recall correctly, if they got a map win from this, they could have they had a potential to go into the knockout rounds, but unfortunately that didn't happen. So I'm still excited to see them more in the in the what was their last tournament? Countdown. Countdown Cup. Countdown, Countdown Cup. Yes. Yeah. So and, many of um, those, yes. Danny. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies, guys. I was I was getting too excited. <laughs> no, no. no that was so we're riding the high with you. Don't worry. I completely agree with Danny. I. I if anything, I don't think Houston played anywhere near as badly as Danny said, but they kind of got a little unlucky with the map pool. They kind of were forced into playing this Winston style against Dallas Fuel, and Houston's no slouch at that composition, but that's just Dallas's bread and butter, and they showed that today, just being absolutely dominant against Houston. But unfortunately, Houston don't make the Summer Showdown playoffs. They are out of it, uh, I believe, right now. Don't. Please fact check me. Uh, I'm not 100%, but I'm pretty no, sure they're correct. out of this little I think, I think so. I think that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So, kind of disappointing into Houston. We were very high up on them. I think a lot of us were like, they're yeah. finally going to go to Hawaii. And in two days, in two matches, it comes crumbling down. So, unfortunate if you're a Houston fan, but Dallas fans, rejoicing once again. Yeah, I also want to say that, you know, I think that, like Costa said, Houston Outlaws, I think they brought their game. It was just unlucky that they had to play against the Dallas Fuel and on Gibraltar, like, what are you going to do? Hollywood point B, you're playing against Fearless and Fielder. I do would like to go back and see how many of those biotic grenades that Piggy actually ate, uh, because it seemed to be a consistent problem throughout the match. And you know, Fielder's an amazing Anna. I, I don't want to take anything away from the guy, but generally if you're a diva, you know, I learned this the hard way as a Reinhardt playing against 
on a ghost, for example, you gotta watch out for those priority grenades because they are wind conditioned for the opposing team. I need to go back and check because it's hard to track, right? I can't track all the priority grenades in the game, but how many did Piggy eat? Was that something he focused on? Because that seemed to be the biggest difference maker for me anyway. Fielder was an amazing uh, honor in today's matchup. Yep. All right. You know, I'm gonna be the one saying it. Sorry, but actually not sorry about it. It's not really unlucky now, is it, that you have to go up against Dallas Fuel. Houston Outlaws could have clinched their spot yesterday against Boston, and I'm really mad that they didn't do it. If they would have won that match yesterday, they would not bad? have been Calm in that position so today. <laughs> I got really upset about this. Hold it back. Sorry, sorry, it's fine. Sorry, it's fine. Sorry, look at me. Look at me. It's fine. It's fine. No, it's, it's not right. fine. I really want. Deep breath. No, I'm, I'm just. Deep this, this, this anger is coming from a place of me really wanting to see them True. in Hawaii playing it out. Yeah. Like I really wanted to see yeah. them go the distance and. Based on the performance from yesterday and today, that's not going to happen. But yeah, I, I wouldn't go as far as calling it unlucky. Uh, one more stage. Anyway. So. One, more, one more stage. <laughs> one more stage. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Okay, I got it. Uh, match recaps, that's where we're at. Uh, Washington, London, another match we saw today. And uh, Washington was wearing a lot of different hats. Uh, some a better fit than others. Uh, they also experimented a little bit with some, some subbing here. What were your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, the Washington Justice, uh, they blew their opponents away. Did, did someone get that? Never mind. Okay, don't, don't worry. What? Um, no, the Washington Justice, <laughs> they rolled the lot of Spitfire. Uh, amazing performance from them. And they did try some stuff out. They did try a lot of different compositions. They said in the post-match interview, Mag uh, talked to Danny and he spoke about how they want to excel playing all of these different cats' compositions. We saw a, a full hold here on Temple of Anubis. Uh, very impressive stuff playing the Winston composition, but then they also played the Reinhardt, they also played the Orisa. This is what the Washington Justice want to do. They want to become uh, one of those teams that can dominate in the Overwatch League, uh, really, no matter what the meta is. Uh, and then, of course, we also saw Tuba come in uh, on Ike Malde. And I actually sent a message pre asking him about this, pre the general matter manager for the Washington Justice. Uh, and he said it's been a difficult season for Tuba because he hasn't had a chance, really, to prove himself. Um, of course, he's competing with a lot of really good players for uh, playtime uh, on the Washington Justice. So they've actually trialed him um, in all three different roles to see what would actually suit Tuba best. Where does he have the best opportunity to get playtime? Um, they liked what they saw from him playing the main support, trying to fill a, fit a role uh, for him onto this team. And then well, this was a bit of a test for them because they've said previously, um, the Washington Justice uh, spoke to Danny and they said that they've had pr trouble performing in matches like they did in scrims because they had such a different kind of like shot calling vibe going on in uh, the practice and then it was different in their matches, right? So a bit of a test for two, but to see um, if he's, you know, leveling up on that main support role, if that's something he can provide and help the team with, you know, playing Brigida, for example, and if that translates to actually matches or that's just a scrim thing. So a bit of an interesting experiment, and you're playing the Lona Spitfire, who are uh, zero and twelve now. So you know why? Why not? Why not give it a go? I mean, Casa didn't like it. Well, he's, yeah, he I, says no. I, says no. I, I don't want to give my my full opinion here, but like, hey, it like they're trying something out. Obviously, their Do season it. so far hasn't nah, hasn't been great. They need to do something to get some consistency. Putting Tuber on main support, I'm not 100 percent sure if it's it. But hey, we can agree to disagree. We'll see how Washington uh, does in the future. They obviously get the win against London Spitfire today. You know, the sky's the limit for these guys. They have the talent. They just need to get the results. Absolutely. I'm, now, uh, I'm curious. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, I'm just curious no, if they're know. going to keep doing this thing, changing up comps in matches and trying or like running like all sorts of different fun. things. <laughs> yeah. I feel like okay. maybe maybe against London you can you can get away with it, but I don't yeah, think there's a, yeah. a lot of teams where you can like actually, actually pull it off. Yeah. Get away. Yeah. Oh, so okay. So I, here's. It's a bit risky. Uh, it, it's it's the post show, okay? I'm going to take a second, okay? Because we don't have to get ready for the matches. <laughs> yes. I, I'm taking a minute. Everyone, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm taking a minute. Right. I'm take just take, I'm take just saying. I don't want the Washington Justice out of all teams to get into this trap of like. Hey, you know, uh, we're always going to counter our opponent. We're always going to find a compositional advantage, and that's how we're going to win these matches. When you have incredible players like Mag, Decay, yeah. Fury, um, I mean, even Baby on the flex support role, like you have incredible individual skill. Sometimes just take the matchup. Just take the matchups like, yeah. okay, we got DK. We're just going to let DK be absolutely awesome. And we don't always have to find the superior compositional swap because then you end up 
uh, you're going to end up putting your players um, at heroes that they don't excel at yeah. as much. And I think it's better to rely on the individual skill mechanical diff when you have players like the K, rather than trying to force the compositional diff that you then have to execute on heroes you've you know, performed worse at. So, a bit of a rant. I'm done. No, I appreciate we're, we're, it. No, I agree. I agree. I agree. Yeah. 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 I, I'm Preach, I don't want brother. to the I kind of want to just like say something that's going to tip him off the edge. What? Like, we can what do you have to say to me, Costa? No, no, no. no give give it to me. It's fine. Move on, Soy. Go on. Hold me back. I mean, I, I don't know if I want to hold you back, but let's keep you back, Costa, Thanks, maybe for now. Uh, Gladiators versus Toronto was the first match of the day. I honestly expected or maybe more hope that it's going to be a little bit closer than it was. It was a very quick affair. Gladiators. Um, yeah, they ran with it. We said it, uh, we said it already like three times, I think. Uh, but they had no time to waste. They were in and out of this match. It's actually interesting because someone we haven't really talked a lot so far in this season for the Gladiators is Mira. He's usually come in as this Doomfist specialist, but he actually had, was a permanent mainstay in this series, playing the Doomfist but also playing the Echo. This might actually be a really good metaphor in where he can thrive because I think he did a great job on everything that he had to play. And he really sort of, he's just an aggressive player that just makes plays. Obviously, it doesn't always come off and we've seen that from him historically, but I think he played really well. And if they can integrate Mirror and Kevster and have that massive flexibility of both their hero pools, it can be a big thing for the Gladiators. Obviously, Bird Ring's gonna be the mainstay hit scan, but if for Mira and Kevsta, when they're not needing to play a hit, hit scan, they are very diverse, and they showed that against the Toronto Defiant today. Came up, played the Reinhardt stuff that we know the Gladiators can play, but more impressively, I think they picked up this Winston, Tracer, Echo, and just took it to the Toronto Defiant, and it wasn't particularly close at this point as well. So Gladiators looking to be a dominant force, and I'm just worried that they're gonna Houston Outlaws it or something like that. Come on, Gladiators, we all want you to go to Hawaii. We all wanna see you guys perform against the best. Please just keep this run going. Anyone? Anything? Gladiators? No their one. chances? I just want to say... Haipu? Yes? Aspire, Doomfist, was very entertaining. I like this. Aspire. Yes. Aspire's Doomfist. Yes. Danny is Aspire. indeed correct. Aspire, I think! Indeed. Throw the back no, I like at it. him. Okay. Uh, let's actually <laughs> take a look at the summer showdown standings to see where we're currently at, so we don't need to do the math. Oh, never mind, there's lots of math to be done, but we're not going to attempt it. Mm. Uh, four teams are uh, indefinitely eliminated. Shock still very much on the edge. Uh, it's not really up to them if they make it in or not, though. Uh, Toronto Defiant. You know, like I'm just reading off names at this point because I am trying to figure <laughs> out the numbers as I'm speaking, but they're not coming to me. It's, uh, there, there's a lot, it's, Zoe. I mean, yeah, Atlanta Rain, they're playing Toronto Defiant. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, if, if, Toronto, if Atlanta Rain beat the Toronto Defiant, they're in. Um, and I, I guess the polar opposite. Never mind. It, there's too much math. Anyway, Washington <laughs> Justice and Gladiators uh, play each other tomorrow. Tomorrow, now, I yeah. Think yeah. If Gladiators get 3 0'd, they'd still have the tiebreaker over Shock because they beat them oh. uh, earlier in the stage, really? right? They beat them 3 2 in the first Wait, no, plays the first match. Uh, yeah, but then it also comes down to math anyway, as well. Predictions! Anyway, no. That's what it looks <laughs> yeah. like. Yeah, we should. We should that's, yeah, you know what? We got, we're yeah. going to approach the numbers for you overnight. It's going to be great. Um, we, I love we that little more silence. That tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, but you heard our brains rattling. Yeah, there, like, all four of us. We were just like, oh, okay. <laughs> we hey, thought we had we, it until we that know what right. we're doing, guys. Woo! We know what we're yeah. doing. Look at that. Yeah. Like, we were correct. We were... Yeah, we're all right. We don't... Yeah. We're not awful at our jobs. Ah, yes. Times. Oh, yeah. Ah, yes. Okay. Oh, oh wow. Three-way tie. Costa, how's the air up there? Is yeah, no, it's nice. It's, it's a Aren't little bit up here, but you know, I'm making it work. Sorry? You're just all, all alone at the top. Aren't you getting lonely? Don't you want to, you know, join yeah, us? It's kind of sad. Be friends. Doesn't matter if you're family. lonely at the top. You're still at the top. You know. So who needs friends? Uh, I need who? friends. Please keep. Please catch up. I miss you guys. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Or please can, catch I mean, up. It's in your hands. Right. Like you can just come down to us. Yeah. Uh, we don't have yeah, to I mean, go up. <laughs> Wait, you we can't can be more up. right than you. You have to be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, let's, maybe tomorrow is the day. Maybe maybe he's going to play maybe. with his house money yeah. and, and, you know, risk a few. Or th then he's right and then he's going to go even further into the... Yeah, we'll find out. Anyway, uh, we're heading into a very quick break. But after that, 
critically acclaimed. Built without biases that no one asked for. Of course, our best of the day will grace your very screens right after our break. But first, last night, after their match against the Boston Uprising, the Outlaws organization actually invited their fan club and the University of St. Thomas's Overwatch team to face off in a fully produced Overwatch League style show match. So let's take a look at oh, that. Wow. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Thank you. 